story is based out of rumors from the street. On September 25th, 2012, Who's good, JJ? King Vaughn, a member of O Block, would encounter a rival Southside Chicago gang member by the name of K.I. on a local train ride. K.I. is a member of STL, which stands for St. Lawrence, a street in which most STL gang members reside on. Nigga said, I'd fuck Uzi, why? <laughs> right, that ass, why? Years, He's and tiny and cute, a fucking yo. has resulted in many casualties. When King Vaughn and K.I. spotted each other on the train, the two immediately began to get physical, with King Vaughn landing several punches to K.I.'s face. After the Nigga incident, King chain. Vaughn logged onto Twitter and tweeted about <laughs> the altercation with K.I., claiming that an opposing gang member got caught with their guard down on the train. K.I. would then begin to tweet about the situation herself by saying that her ear and arm are messed up. How you admit to get fucked up? Tweet by also saying that she only has a bruise on her face and that she's not tripping because her 40 caliber firearm would put a hole in King Vaughn's face. This situation is coming from the altercation on the train. Would I ain't gonna lie. I pushed the op D word in her face. I pushed the op D word in her face. Oh God, I did. Bro, it don't even matter. It's not a girl anymore, bro. She's man. Soon become the start of King Vaughn and K.I. frequently communicating with each other on social media. Just four days after the train incident, K.I. would tweet, retweet if you think I look good, in which King Vaughn would retweet shortly after. Hey, yo! Three days <laughs> later, K.I. would get into another altercation on the train, but this time with Lil Scud, an O Block member who is friends with King Vaughn. K.I. was eager to let this be known and quickly tweeted out that she beat up Lil Scud and to let King Vaughn know that she isn't someone to be messed with. Think her name is King After Vaughn. 30 minutes of no replies, K.I. would tweet directly at King Vaughn explaining how she beat up Lil Scud all by herself and that he didn't even get one punch on her. King Vaughn would eventually Damn. reply stating that K.I. is about that life and that he may be in love with her. K.I. would respond to this by calling King Vaughn gay. Vaughn clearly didn't appreciate that and told <laughs> K.I. not to do that to fight the conversation <laughs> by saying he would treat K.I. right. King Vaughn would soon begin to direct message K.I. on Twitter with his first DM being, What up? I'm trying to change you and upgrade you. I want to nail something. Nigga What's is up? wild, bro. K.I. would appear to be somewhat shocked by these DMs, but King Vaughn would respond the next day, saying that it wasn't him who sent the first message, and then goes on to say that he likes K.I. for real. And that all this shit over with. What the fuck? With, that he is going to be with her. Who the fuck that? K.I. would then go on to tell King Vaughn that she heard a rumor in the streets that Oblock is trying to kill her. King Vaughn would respond to those claims, stating that what she heard was true, but he doesn't think he could do it because he thinks she's actually cool. The two then discuss when they are going to stop gangbanging, to which they both reveal they believe that they are both going to die in the gang war. Man, ain't no g Hell no! Nah. But this little bitch say I was in a whip plot, you know what saying? Saying y'all gonna kill me. On BD, I ain't gonna lie, motherfuckers on that, but I ain't even talk- I ain't- fuck. On BD, I ain't gonna lie, motherfuckers is on that, but I don't even think I can kill you, you seem cool as hell. When you gonna stop gangbanging? Man, ain't no goofy- Man, ain't no goofy. When you gonna start game banging? Fuck you talking about? Laugh my ass off on BD. I ain't trying to go on you. Wait, what? Laugh my ass on BD. I ain't trying to go on you. Go on you. I'm just asking and I don't even know. I probably just had to die in this shit because I ain't. I don't look like I'm losing no quit and I love my niggas. True. KI then goes on to say that she. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. We ain't no flash on GD. Y'all ass must really be threatened by me. Hello, I think y'all gonna take me he out. He thinks Oblock feels threatened by her, to which King Vaughn would respond with, Look, I'm look, I ain't trying to tweet with you, shorty. So why you want to go in and tweet with me? Nah, and nah, we just be trying to get whoever ain't like we thirsty, thirsty to get you. I'm not trying you. to mess with you. So why are you trying to mess with me? We are just trying to get whoever. It's not like we are in a rush to get you. But I had a nine millimeter. But I had a, but I had the nine on me when I saw you that day. I was on the bike and tried. <laughs> nah, why the fuck is he admitting to trying to kill this nigga? <laughs> when I saw you, what the my fuck bike, was going rain? Was going to grab you, but the police. And I tried to grab you, but but the blue and whites was right there, and one of the hoes from the block was holding a seven when I saw you on the train. That it, take that his cash, then I make him eat my ass. Wise words of Polo G. From the block was holding a seven when I saw you on the train. That that's if motherfuckers was really. These were right there. The girl <laughs> with me also had a seven millimeter when we saw you on the train. If we were really trying to get you, I would have took my chances then. Train that if motherfuckers was really trying to get you, I would have took my chances blowing on the train or the drive. 
KI soon responds by shouting out ST. Fuck that shit, boy. Still, fuck that shit, boy. It's STL or die. Get with it or get lost. I'm ready to go war with anybody. Yeah, and states that she is ready to go to war with anybody. Vaughn then tells her that she doesn't always. LOL, you must be drunk right now. You don't always gotta act tough. You have to act tough, to which KI says, treat enemies like. Treat ops like ops, what you expect. Like enemies. What do you expect? The next morning, KI would start off the day by dissing Odie Perry, a respected member of Wick City who was fatally shot just a few years prior. Yeah. King Vaughn he would see this and respond with, See, that's why you keep getting beat up. KI then tells King Vaughn to pull up, to which he responds with, I should have pissed or spit on you after I beat you up, but I wasn't thinking. KI proceeds to laugh at this and tells King Vaughn to leave it in the streets. Shortly after this Twitter interaction, King Bro, why do they follow each other or like keep talking bro? I ain't gonna lie, when you young you that ass talk to ups on the fucking social media like like niggas is just dumb. outside looking for KI and ended up running into a group of rival gang members at the local corner store. According to King Vaughn, the rival members were scared of him and had the store employees lock the door to keep him out. Vaughn would tweet about this as soon as it On BDM, them niggas in the store was shook. They had a store being locked the door and the niggas on rolls and they on shit. Where was Kyra the tough ass? It happened. Where was Kyra the tough KI ass? I would respond by saying she is on her way. King Vaughn would quickly tell her not to come since he was already leaving the store anyways. KI responds by calling Vaughn funny and says she'll come to wherever he is at, which Vaughn responds by telling KI to be smart. Four days later, King Vaughn and KI would continue talking in the DMs after KI would message Vaughn with What the fuck? You Come outside. Vaughn would quickly Come. respond to KI with a simple, don't mess with me. To which KI would reply back, taking a slight dig at Oblock and the work they're doing in the streets. King Vaughn would then ask KI if she wants to have a shootout with him, to which KI would shockingly respond with, hell yeah, you and your friend T-Roy. King Vaughn didn't seem to take this very seriously and responded back with, Hashtag very scary. KI then states that she was just around O Block and didn't see anybody outside. Vaughn would soon reply saying that they're busy. Nigga said we finna throw some grenades. Nigga didn't even read that shit. We finna throw some grenades in that bitch or two because everybody must go. <laughs> what the fuck? Nah, what the fuck is wrong with her? <laughs> Things, but that they will see them soon. <laughs> Yo, KI bro. would then tell King Vaughn that she thinks they are <laughs> Now these niggas like 11 on King God. Vaughn replies with a simple, ha. <laughs> the conversation would then go dark for three days until King Vaughn would randomly message KI saying, What's up? When are you going to let your hair down and put on a tight dress for me? I would risk my life to get some of that. KI did not respond to this message. After that message, the two didn't speak to each other for about a week, but then on October 24, 2012, KI would announce on Twitter that she would be going to Swisher Suites. Why are you posting your location? What the fuck? Why are you posting your location? A popular store located in Oblock territory. King Vaughn would reply to this tweet moments later saying, Don't do that. Today is not the day. <laughs> she, he's warning her. Today is not the day. Don't play around. Do that. Today is not the day. <laughs> KI would then respond by saying that she was good, BJ. I appreciate Vaughn, you, gang. Have a good day. I appreciate you. Always outside. I said that four times. Vaughn would then say, I saw you before, right or wrong. KI would respond with, Yeah, but ever since then, I feel like you've been hiding because I've been coming through your territory ever since. King Vaughn replies with, I've been going to Rhodes, but I think when you come over here, I be over here. KI ends the conversation with a simple LOL. Two days later, KI would suddenly post a tweet stating that King Vaughn was a goofy who got beat up by her friend FBG Butta just two years ago. Nah, I'd dead be like that. This shit get me tight though. People be like, oh my god, you was just this two years ago. You was just that. You just got beat up. You was a TikTok. It don't matter, nigga. Niggas become... Bro, I could be... Bro, I ain't gonna lie. I could be a school teacher. I could be a, a daycare... Bro, I could be a youth motherfucker. I could... I could be the most positive person. I could be a dancer on the train, nigga. The next day, I could become a killer. It does not fucking matter, nigga. It does not matter. People are like, oh my god, you was just a good boy. Now you in the street. It don't matter, nigga. Niggas was just basketball players. It don't matter. Anybody can... Anybody can... Feel me? It is what it is. Niggas can start drilling at any time. It don't matter. Circumstances change. I ain't gonna lie. I used to think like this, too. Hey, like, bro, you was just doing this, and now you a gangster. But it really don't matter, bro. It really don't matter. 
King Vaughn would see this tweet and soon reply back saying, and you know the other stuff I did to you. That guys, ass, it right? takes one thought. To which KI would you need say, just do it. You think you're drilling, but you need practice. King Vaughn fires back by denying that he needs drilling practice, in which KI responds by saying, On BD, I need practice, shorty, because King Vaughn does his thingy thing and all that. <laughs> what the fuck is he? <laughs> you talking too much. Ask your Royd, he know about me on GD. Vaughn is saying too much for Twitter, and that Vaughn's French Royd, an O Block member who was fatally shot a few months prior. No oh God, not anybody though. No, literally anybody, nigga. The happiest go lucky person ever. The pussiest person you know could really the next year could be a gangster. Like <sighs> It's about her. King Vaughn then laughs at AI for saying on G D, then proceeds to tell her that she can ask her dead friends about him. Three days later, K.I. would tweet at King Vaughn saying, I want to meet King Vaughn face to face, in which Vaughn would respond with, LOL, you don't really want that. Yeah, like, none of the big homies is telling these niggas to get off the fucking line yeah. online. K.I. Like, would then respond with, see, you don't think I'm tough. Four days later, no, she said, see, think I'm pussy. to King Vaughn, saying that she hopes people in O-Block don't actually call Vaughn King Vaughn, and that it's suspect if you do. King Vaughn would respond back by claiming that he earned the name King Vaughn. K.I. responds by bringing up the fact that Vaughn used to get beat up. Hello, you finally turned up, huh? Because a few years ago, you wasn't known you was getting beat back up in the day. Shit. Vaughn replied back laughing at the fact that K.I. was even talking about getting beat up. LOL, you talking about getting beat up. If it wasn't no guns, I'd be walking on roads and EBT drilling y'all in the face with my fists. And that if it wasn't for guns, he would be walking up and down their block all day. Six days later, King Vaughn would make a tweet about K.I. saying that she sounds good on the phone. This oh, would David? indicate that King Vaughn and K.I. physically talked on the phone with each other and didn't just message each other back and forth on social media. Vaughn would also make a tweet several hours later complaining that K.I. hasn't answered her phone all day. Now nah, this nigga was like, at first I thought he was trolling. Now nah, he's really trying to get some pussy. And that's why he, that's why he, that's why he smoked her. That's why he left her going nigga because she, she ain't never give up the pussy. King Vaughn would eventually get arrested on November 20th, 2012 for unlawful use of a weapon by a felon. <laughs> they Vaughn been it. What the King fuck? Vaughn sitting behind bars for over a year. While behind bars, King Vaughn's sister, Kayla B, tweeted at K.I. telling her that Vaughn misses her and that she should go and visit him in jail. K.I. responded with LOL, but Kayla B followed up insisting oh, that bro, what the fuck? really wanted to see her. <laughs> On February 11th, 2014, King Vaughn was released Kid Vaughn was kind of cute. You're kind of fucking gay. First thing he did following his release was tweet to KI saying, "What's up? You don't miss me?" Nah, I ain't gonna lie. He dead. He dead like her. All jokes aside, he has to like her, bro. Little shorty a tweaker. Little shorty a tweaker. I have to be, bro. There's no way your first day home you hit up fucking her. KI like. would quickly respond with, "What's up? When are we linking up?" King Vaughn would then respond by asking why she never came and visited him in jail after allegedly saying she would. K.I. would not reply directly to this tweet, but moments later tweeted, How does it feel to lose your friend while behind bars? Referring Damn. to the death of Jay Money, one of the Damn. top members of O-Block who was fatally shot during Vaughn's that incarceration. That nigga was a graduate. King Vaughn wouldn't say anything about the tweet, but would later tweet R.I.P. Jay Money in honor of him. K.I. would soon retweet this as a way of taunting him, to which King Vaughn would quickly compose a tweet discussing Crack and Modell, two STL gang members who unfortunately passed away. While all of this was going on, Oblock was already making plans to avenge J Money after word got out that an STL gang member by the name of Lil B was allegedly responsible for the death of J Money. Oblock was ready for Lil B, but before they could meet face to face, Lil B was fatally shot by the Chicago Police Department in March of 2014 after reportedly pointing a gun at one of the officers. This means that Oblock would not be able to avenge one of their top members and were now looking for the next best thing. On April 10th, 2014, K.I. would release a series of tweets regarding her future. The tweets state, I do what I do because I know God has a day for me. You're nobody until someone kills you. That's just real. I've seen too many of my friends in a casket. Less than 24 hours after posting those tweets online, K.I. and several others were standing outside of a home on the 6400 block of South Eberhardt when a man exited the passenger side of a blue Oldsmobile that was parked facing eastbound on the corner of 65th and Eberhardt. The man proceeded to walk northbound on Eberhardt and quickly began shooting at the group of people standing in front of the house. The suspect would then retreat back to the getaway vehicle and flee the scene going eastbound on 65th Street. 
three individuals were... Like, they really some op-ass niggas. Like, damn, you got this bitch whole... You got this girl on a complete Google fucking I'm maps. Look at this shit. People you got her on Google fucking maps. Who the fuck is that? Immediately rushed to nearby hospitals. Oh, wait, what? Three individuals were hit during the situation and were immediately rushed to nearby hospitals. The first victim was an unidentified male who got shot in his right foot and survived his injuries. The second victim was rumored to be FBG Butta, the same individual that KI claimed to have beaten up King Vaughn in the past. Butta was shot in the right knee and also survived his injuries. The third and final victim was shot seven times and passed away from their injuries during surgery at the hospital. That individual was KI. Detectives would arrive to the crime scene shortly after and began to- Damn, bro. She died right after saying she was gonna die. She died- She died right after saying she was gonna die. Interview anyone who saw what happened. While there were many witnesses on scene, most of them provided detectives with vague details about the case with some of them even admitting that they are scared to cooperate. However, certain witnesses gave the detectives a similar story, stating that- Damn, niggas got the car, the blue Oldsmobile. <laughs> a male black subject exited the front passenger seat wearing a gray hoodie and pro proceeded northbound on. Was trolling, holding his side, related that there was a group of individuals. Got me right back. The man wearing dark colored clothing mm. approached the house and began to open fire while yelling things at them. These witnesses would also give detectives a name of someone who they think may have committed the crime, a name in which the Chicago Police Department were already quite familiar with. Over the next couple of days, authorities would continue to investigate the homicide of K.I. and eventually developed a photo spread of potential suspects. Okay, Russ. Witnesses were soon called in to view the photo spread and almost all of them were quick to point out the same suspect whose name was given to detectives on the day of the crime. Then on April 29, 2014, just 18 days after the murder of K.I., Davon Bennett, a.k.a. King Vaughn, was taken into custody by Officer Fernandez of the Chicago Police Department's Fugitive Apprehension Unit to be interviewed Damn. by detectives. At around 1 p.m., King Vaughn was placed in an interview room where Damn. two detectives began to question him about his involvement in K.I.'s murder. Vaughn would quickly deny all involvement and stated that he doesn't even know K.I. and never goes around 65th Street. The detectives would then ask Vaughn if he would be willing to do a polygraph examination to which he would agree to do and was given food and water. While this interview was taking place, four cooperating witnesses were called in so they could view an in-person lineup of the suspects. The first witness to view the lineup told authorities that they were unable to identify the suspect while the second witness pointed to King Vaughn and said it could possibly be the suspect but wasn't sure. The third witness couldn't make an identification but verbally told detectives it was King Vaughn. The fourth and final witness viewed the lineup and pointed directly to King Vaughn. Two assistant state attorneys would then arrive shortly Damn, after niggas is and interview all the evidence in the K.I. case. Niggas is ratting. Detectives would then go back to the interview room to check King Vaughn, where Vaughn would begin to tell detectives that he changed his mind and will no longer do a polygraph exam. King Vaughn then starts giving detectives an alibi, claiming that he checked in at his parole office on the day of K.I.'s death. Detectives immediately started looking into Vaughn's alibi and was able to confirm that he did in fact check in at his parole office, but there was still 30 minutes of unexplained time where he could have still committed the crime. Then on April 30th, 2014, the Cook County State Attorney's Office would announce that they are declining to prosecute King Vaughn for the murder of K.I. due to inconsistencies in the witness statements. That this ass. would mean that internally this case is solved according to the Chicago and Police Department, but to the public this case is still unsolved with the suspect still at large. King Vaughn was then released from police custody. Damn, yeah, nigga, beat that shit. 6.30 p.m. that same night. Thanks, David Festival, for that food. King fool. Vaughn would tweet, I'm so happy and grateful. I'm too real for this. King Vaughn would then go on and get arrested for another murder less than three months later. What the fuck, He sat in the Cook County Jail for over three years while awaiting trial. During the trial, King Vaughn was acquitted of all charges due to lack of evidence and was released back into the free world. After being released, lifelong friend and yeah, rapper, this is when Dirk was filming basically up. Will Dirk would take King Vaughn under his wing and attempt to turn him into a gangster rap superstar. Within a matter of months, King Vaughn would become one of the top street rappers in the music industry, with his music surpassing tens of millions of streams each month, and even received co-stars from crazy. celebrities such as NBA star LeBron James. Then, on November 6, 2020, King Vaughn's iconic music career Damn, would be cut short nigga. after he was fatally shot in Atlanta during an altercation with another rapper. 
I ain't gonna lie, you live how you, you die how you live, nigga. Stay on the sidewalks. Stay on the fucking sidewalks. And that was an interesting ass vid. Tell my blessings on one hand, but I'm grateful. When I make it home, look to the sky and I say thank you. I peeped the snakes up in the grass, I couldn't play cool. If they put the up and leave, nigga, they was mental.